tracks, tracking in complex sensor systems. Hi, my name is Mehmet Tunjar. I'm an early stage researcher at Fraunhofer FKIA and currently working on trucks project. The topic of this video is Monte Carlo based distance dependent Chinese restaurant process for segmentation of 3D LiDAR data using motion and spatial features. This work is also presented at the 18th International Conference on Information Fusion in Washington DC. At the beginning of my talk, I'm gonna give a short introduction and tell what's the motivation of our work. Then I'm gonna touch briefly on motion field estimation of the environment using 3D LiDAR data. After that, I'm gonna talk about segmentation with distance dependent Chinese restaurant problem. Finally, I will show our preliminary results and do a conclusion. Object recognition system of autonomous vehicles perform the segmentation and tracking components independently. Therefore, segmentation is based on distance features alone. This usually results in under-segmentation of the environment, which means one segment can contain two or more objects. This leads to wrong tracking and classification errors when objects get closer. This problem motivates us that segmentation and tracking should be addressed simultaneously. Therefore, we propose an approach in order to use motion and distance features together for segmentation of environment. In this part, I'm gonna summarize the pre-processing of raw measurements and motion field estimation of the environment using 3D LiDAR data. Modern 3D sensors provide large amount of data. For instance, Velodin LiDAR has a frame rate of 10 Hz, which means it completes one scan in 0.1 second. The sensor output has a 360 degree horizontal field of width. It produces more than 1 million points in a second, which makes the signal processing a challenging task. Therefore, we map the measurements to an occupancy grid to reduce the amount of data. The average height of points in a grid cell is used to remove ground points. We used a connected component algorithm with 8 neighborhoods to extract segmentation blobs. Here, points represent the center of mass of measurements falling in a grid cell. We assume that grid cells are the basic elements for motion estimation, which means that each grid cell has its own velocity vector. Then we apply a threshold on the size of the extracted blobs to prune huge ones. This avoids tracking the grid cells of big static structures such as buildings. After applying the threshold, only the grid cells inside the red boxes will be tracked. To solve the estimation problem, independent linear Kalman filters are applied to each potential moving grid cells. A nearest neighbor filter is used for the grid cell associations. If a grid cell in the current frame is associated with a grid cell from the previous frame, its Kalman filter is replaced by the last Kalman filter and updated with new observations. The prediction and update process of Kalman filter is shown here. The state vector x contains the estimated center of mass of the points in grid cells and their corresponding velocities. W and V are white Gaussian noises with zero means. F and A state transition and observation matrices, which are time invariant. Delta T is the scanning period of the 3D LiDAR sensor, which is 0.1 second in our experiments. This figure shows the estimated motion field of the environment on an occupancy grid. Arrows represent the estimated velocity vectors of grid cells. Motion field estimation process is illustrated on real 3D LiDAR data. Figure A shows the raw LiDAR data. Figure B represents the non-ground measurements and potential moving objects in black boxes. Figure C shows the estimated motion field of the environment with purple regions. 
In the red box, which represents a segmentation blob in the right bottom of the figure, there are two different objects. One is static and other is moving. However, they are detected as one object considering only distance features. We would like to also use motion information together with distance features to discriminate that kind of class objects. After estimating the motion vector of each grid cells, it turns into a clustering problem to determine the number of subsegment regions representing different objects in a single segmentation blob. We would like to find contiguous regions and learn the number of clusters in each segmentation blob. However, traditional clustering algorithms such as k-means or probabilistic mixture models don't account for external information. Therefore, a distance-dependent Chinese restaurant process is adapted to solve this clustering problem. The distance-dependent Chinese restaurant process is an extension of the traditional Chinese restaurant process. Assume a restaurant with an infinite number of tables. Customers enter the restaurant one by one. They sit at the occupied tables with a probability proportional to how many customers are already sitting at that table. They sit at an unoccupied table with a probability proportional to a scaling parameter alpha. After all customers have entered the restaurant, the seating plan provides a clustering. The Chinese restaurant process mixture is an exchangeable model, which means that the posterior distribution over clusters doesn't depend on the ordering of the observed data. However, ex exchangeability is not a good assumption in segmentation problems because the locations of the grid cells are critical to provide contiguous segmentations. On the other hand, the distance-dependent Chinese restaurant process provides a method to model features and non-exchangeability by linking customers to other customers instead of tables. It is shown in the figure. This indirectly determines the cluster assignments. In our segmentation problem, Restaurant represents each extracted segmentation blob from the environment. Tables denote the clusters or objects in a segmentation blob. And customers are the grid cells. Grid cells I and J sit together with a probability proportional to a window decay function F. Or grid cell I can sit alone with a probability proportional to a scaling parameter alpha. This function enforces the algorithm to generate contiguously connected clusters in a segmentation blob. This is the generative process of the algorithm. For each grid cell, sample an assignment. This indirectly determines the cluster assignments. Then, for each cluster, sample parameters from a base distribution. After that, for each grid cell, independently sample observed data from cluster parameters. After the generative process, clusters can be found by posterior inference. The problem is to compute the conditional distribution of grid cell assignments conditioned on the features, scaling parameter, distance between grid cells, window and base distribution parameters. However, the posterior is not tractable to directly evaluate because of the denominator in the equation. Therefore, we use Gibbs sampling for the inference. We define the Markov chain by iteratively sampling each latent variable ci, conditioned on the others and the observation. Here, the first term is the prior, that shown in previous slides, and the second one is the likelihood. We can decompose the likelihood term as shown in this equation. k is the number of clusters. 
observations at each cluster are sampled independently from the same parameters. And these parameters are drawn from the base distribution G0. We can compute the marginal probability with this equation. Selecting base distribution G0 and data generating distribution as a conjugate pair helps us to marginalize out the cluster parameters theta. Then, this integral becomes straightforward to calculate. Sampling in Markov chain happens in two stages. First, we remove the grid cell link from the current configuration and consider how it changes the likelihood term. Removing CI either leaves the cluster structure unchanged or splits the cluster into two clusters. The sampler explores the space of possible segmentations with these movements. M and L are the cluster indices joined to cluster K. This defines a Markov chain whose stationary distribution is the posterior distribution. It provides us the number and regions of objects in an extracted segmentation blob. In this part, I will show our preliminary results. During our experiments with real data, we set up these configurations. Grid cells have a resolution of 0.2 meter in x and y directions. A window decay function is used to connect only neighboring grid cells. Cluster and base distributions are selected as Gaussians. Data set of the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology is used for our experiments. The figure shows the effect of scaling parameter alpha on the cluster structure, which contains two closed objects. Points represent the grid cells. In figure A, the algorithm found seven different objects. For larger alpha, the algorithm intends to find non-robust smaller partitions, especially for the grid cells where objects close to each other. Therefore, we choose smaller alpha for our experiments. Figure A shows a bicycle is getting closer to a parking car. In figure B, we fit a 3D bounding box to objects which are considered. Figure C shows that when two objects come close to each other, the traditional approach detects them as one object. However, by using our proposed segmentation method as shown in figure D, the bicycle and car is discriminated successfully. A thick solid line in figure D shows the separation of objects. In figure A, a person is walking along a parking car. When the segmentation algorithm, which considers only distance features, is applied, the person and car are detected as a one object, which is shown in figure B. Figure C shows that our proposed method separates the person and car successfully. In figure A, two bicycles are moving coherently and getting closer a parking car. Figure B shows that these three objects can be segmented as one object by considering only distance features. It is shown in figure C that although our proposed method discriminates the car from bicycles, it fails to separate coherently moving two bicycles. It is a good point for future work. In order to handle this problem, some kind of appearance model can be integrated to the algorithm in addition to distance and motion features. We test the time cost of our proposed method. The proposed method is not capable to run in real time because of the Markov chain inference. It is about three times slower than the scanning period of the sensor. As a conclusion, motion field of the environment is estimated with 3D LiDAR data. A Markov chain Monte Carlo based distance dependent Chinese restaurant process framework is proposed to use motion and distance features together 
which gives better discrimination of objects even when they get very close. Coherently moving objects couldn't be discriminated when they are very close. As a future work, some kind of appearance model can be integrated to the algorithm. In addition, the algorithm isn't capable of running in real time. Then, as a future work, a sequential Monte Carlo approach can be adapted. Thanks for watching. We would like to thank the support of European Union Mary Curie Tracks project. For more information about tracks, please visit our site at tracks.u20.nl.